Have you ever wondered why on Christmas we cut down and carry evergreen trees inside our houses, decorate them with fancy ornaments, and place presents underneath them? James Arthur wrote, So why do people bring pine trees into their houses at the winter solstice, placing brightly colored red and white packages under their boughs as gifts to show their love for each other and as representations of the love of God and the gift of his son's life? It is because, underneath the pine bough, is the exact location where one would find this most sacred substance, the Amanita muscaria, in the wild. The Amanita muscaria is the red and white magic mushroom that grows almost exclusively beneath pine trees. Their main psychoactive ingredient is muscamol, as well as trace amounts of DMT, an entheogen naturally produced in the brain's pineal gland. The pine cone-shaped pineal gland is an organ that produces the same DMT found in this pine tree fungus, and much more. Dr. Rick Strassman wrote, DMT exists in all of our bodies and occurs throughout the plant and animal kingdoms. It is part of the normal makeup of humans and other mammals, marine animals, grasses and peas, toads and frogs, mushrooms and molds, and barks, flowers and roots. DMT is in this flower here, in that tree over there, and in yonder animal. It is most simply almost everywhere you choose to look. Indeed, it is getting to the point where one should report where DMT is not found rather than where it is. James Arthur wrote, The pine tree is one of the well-known central relics of Christmas. Under this tree is where those who are deemed good find their reward in the form of a present. A big red and white rounded mushroom grows under the very tree we are to look under on Christmas morning to find our gift. Green, red, and white, as Christmas colors, comes from the evergreen tree and the red and white mushrooms underneath. The word Christmas originally comes from the Egyptian Christ, oiled or anointed one, and mace, the sacred cakes annually made and ingested by the Egyptians. This Eucharist was originally made from Amanita muscaria, or was the mushroom itself. The tradition existed all over the ancient world, but most of the iconography and symbology recognized today comes from pre-Christian Northern Europe. James Arthur wrote, The very name Christmas is a holiday name composed of the words Christ, meaning one who is anointed with the magical substance, and Mass, a special religious service or ceremony of the sacramental ingestion of the Eucharist, the body of Christ. In the Catholic tradition, this substance, body, soma, has been replaced by the doctrine of transubstantiation, whereby in a magical ceremony, the priests claim the ability to transform a cracker or a round wafer into the literal body of Christ. Dana Larson wrote, Although most people see Christmas as a Christian holiday, most of the symbols and icons we associate with Christmas celebrations are actually derived from the shamanistic traditions of the tribal peoples of pre-Christian Northern Europe. The sacred mushroom of these people was the red and white Amanita muscaria mushroom. These peoples lived in dwellings made of birch and reindeer hide called yurts. Somewhat similar to a teepee, the yurt's central smoke hole is often also used as an entrance. After gathering the mushrooms from under the sacred trees where they appeared, the shamans would fill their sacks and return home. Climbing down the chimney entrances, they would share out the mushroom's gifts with those within. Santa also dresses like a mushroom gatherer. When it was time to go out and harvest the magical mushrooms, the ancient shamans would dress much like Santa, wearing red and white fur-trimmed coats and long black boots. To this day, Siberian shamans dress in ceremonial red and white fur-trimmed jackets to gather the magic mushrooms. First, they pick and place the mushrooms to partially dry on nearby pine boughs, which prepares them for ingestion and makes the load lighter. This is why we decorate our Christmas trees with ornaments and bulbs, because the gatherers would always adorn trees with drying mushrooms. Next, the shaman collects his red and white presents in a sack and proceeds to travel from house to house, delivering them. During Siberian winters, the snow piles up past the doors of their yurts or huts, so the red and white clad shaman must climb down the smoke hole or chimney to deliver the presents in his sack. Finally, the appreciative villagers string the mushrooms up or put them in stockings hung afront the fire to dry. When they awake in the morning, their presents from under the pine tree are all dried and ready to eat. Dana Larson wrote, 
The Amanita mushroom needs to be dried before being consumed. The drying process reduces the mushroom's toxicity while increasing its potency. The shaman would guide the group in stringing the mushrooms and hanging them around the hearth fire to dry. This tradition is echoed in the modern stringing of popcorn and other items. James Arthur wrote, The ancient shamanic use of Amanita muscaria in Siberia is well documented. Despite governmental oppression against its use, there are still many who refuse to accept the authorized state religion and continue the shamanic traditions in secret. Just as the Siberian shaman, commonly dressing in red and white, would enter through the opening in the roof of a home where a ritual was to be done, Santa Claus also arrives on the roof and enters through the chimney. Just as the shamans would gather the mushrooms in bags which they would bring with them when performing a ceremony, Santa Claus also, on the holy day, brings presents in a bag. Siberian reindeer also enjoy eating Amanita muscaria mushrooms, and thus are often used as a lure by the deer-herding natives. Since one of the hallucinatory experiences often felt on psychedelic mushrooms is that of flying, Santa's flying reindeer are most likely derived from this. In the Arctic Circle, this fungus also has magical associations with animals. Fly agaric contains hallucinogenic chemicals and is a favorite food of reindeer. For thousands of years, the lives of reindeer and Sami people have been entwined. Fly agaric was important to both of them. In autumn, reindeer seek out the mushrooms, even under an early fall of snow. No one knows whether the reindeer are affected, but in the past, Sami shamans took fly agaric in their visionary rituals. They even drank urine from reindeer, believed to be under the influence. In trance, they contacted the great reindeer spirit. On humans, the drug heightens senses and creates visions of flying. Some believe the greatest of all modern myths arose in the Sami's visionary flights of fancy. Perhaps early 19th century ideas drew on these stories to create a Christmas legend. Dana Larson wrote, Reindeer were the sacred animals of these semi-nomadic people. As the reindeer provided food, shelter, clothing, and other necessities, reindeer are also fond of eating the Amanita mushrooms. They will seek them out, and then prance about while under their influence. The effects of the Amanita mushroom usually include sensations of size distortion and flying. The feeling of flying could account for the legends of flying reindeer, and legends of shamanic journeys included stories of winged reindeer transporting their riders up to the highest branches of the world tree. The flying reindeer, sleigh, and the entire Santa Claus mythology originates from Siberia, where Saint Nicholas, the patron saint of children, is a supplanter to the indigenous shamans. James Arthur wrote, Saint Nicholas, known as the patron saint of children, is the most revered saint in Russia, second only to the apostles. He is the Russian Orthodox Church's supplanter to the native people's highly respected local shaman. A shaman is a holy man that is well acquainted with a form of spirituality that incorporates plant and theogens, which facilitate the NDE, near-death experience, or out-of-body experience. Saint Nicholas may not have been a shaman, yet the symbolism on and coloring of his robes could lend to speculation. Dana Larson wrote, One of the side effects of eating Amanita mushrooms is that the skin and facial features take on a flushed, ruddy glow. This is why Santa is always shown with glowing red cheeks and nose. Even Santa's jolly ho-ho-ho is the euphoric laugh of one who has indulged in the magic fungus. Santa's famous magical journey 
where his sleigh takes him around the whole planet in a single night, is developed from the heavenly chariot used by the gods from whom Santa and other shamanic figures are descended. The chariot of Odin, Thor, and even the Egyptian god Osiris is now known as the Big Dipper, which circles around the North Star in a 24-hour period. In different versions of the ancient story, the chariot was pulled by reindeer, or horses. As the animals grew exhausted, their mingled spit and blood falls to the ground, forming Amanita mushrooms. James Arthur wrote, It is fairly common knowledge that the Wynaxman, Saint Nick, was an amalgamation of older Germanic Norse gods such as Thor, Donner, Odin, and Wotan. What's missing here is, just as Santa flies through the skies in his sleigh, Odin, as well as the rest, rode through the sky in his chariot, which is depicted in the stars by the Big Dipper. The Big Dipper is the chariot of Odin and Wotan, Thor, King Arthur, and even Osiris of Egypt. The chariot that circles the North Star in a 24-hour period is thus also known as the Sleigh of Santa Claus because it circles his mythological home, the North Pole. It is no surprise that Nordic Germanic gods have connection to mushrooms in their mythology. As Thor throws his mushroom-shaped hammer to the ground, mighty thunders and lightning cracks cause the real mushrooms to appear. As the horses pulling Odin through the sky in his chariot become overexerted, their blood-mingled spit falls to the ground and causes the Amanita mushrooms to grow at those exact points. Probably the first Santa was Osiris in ancient Egypt, who rode his flying chariot to and from the North Pole, was born on December 25th, and celebrated by putting presents underneath an evergreen tree. James Arthur wrote, Not only did Osiris ride the sky in a chariot, but after his death Isis found that an evergreen, cedar, had grown overnight from a dead stump to full-sized, which was understood as a sign of Osiris's rebirth and immortality. Interestingly, the traditional birth of Osiris is the 25th of December. The 25th of December was also celebrated annually by putting presents around the cedar tree. This tradition is at least 5,000 years old. The birth of Horus to the goddess virgin mother Isis is perhaps the eldest representation of the goddess sun mythology. Yet it is impossible to know this, or the real age of the astrotheological Virgo giving birth to the child god star mythology for sure. However, it is the oldest source I have found. Santa, an anagram for Satan, dresses in red, keeps lists of naughty and nice children, and seems to steal Christmas from Jesus. But if understood in its original mushroom context, Santa's not a conniving, omniscient list keeper. He's an entheogen, a plant or substance which is said to generate the god within. The word entheogen breaks down en for inside, theo for god, and gen for generate. Generate the god inside. If you have ever taken an entheogen, like psilocybin, DMT, peyote, or ayahuasca, then you are already aware of the spiritual or even religious experiences associated with them. As anyone who has tried them knows, and most anyone who hasn't fiercely denies, these entheogens put us directly in contact with that spark of the divine within ourselves. They allow us access to higher consciousness and open our third eyes. The outer material world dissolves and the five senses return to a state of one sense, one consciousness. James Arthur wrote, First-hand understanding is through the ingestion of the holy substances, of which there has been so much written that this brief expose merely scratches the surface of. It is this direct communal contact which is truly the means whereby a human being can experience his true spiritual nature. One must take very seriously his or her own spirituality, for this is that which we truly are. As I stated in the opening sentence, this experience is of extremely great value, so much so that I feel it necessary to the evolutionary process of each and every individual, and inevitably to all of mankind. If you have mischief, wickedness, or secrecy in you, then entheogens will take you down into the depths of your own hell. But if you have kindness, love, and truth within you, entheogens will raise you up into the heights of that heaven. When people of a poor disposition or in a negative mood eat magic mushrooms, they usually have a bad trip and experience frightening or depressing hallucinations. 
When people of a good disposition or in a positive mood eat mushrooms, they usually have a great trip and experience hours of uncontrollable laughter and a loving, close feeling with everyone around. Just like at Christmas, Santa keeps lists of children who are naughty and nice, at Easter, only good kids get to eat the colored eggs. This is likely because good kids on mushrooms are hilarious and lots of fun, whereas naughty kids on mushrooms guarantee a bad trip for everyone, so they get coal at Christmas and no eggs at Easter. James Arthur wrote, Santa Claus is an all-knowing icon that reads the hearts and intentions of everyone on the planet. Each child is told the story of the round man who wears red and white, and his associates, reindeer, little people, and Mrs. Claus. They are also told the story of a miraculous worldwide flight in a sleigh, which results in presents being delivered under a tree. Yet when a child reaches the age of reasoning, he is informed that this story is all a fabrication. This revelation is devastating upon the psyche of a young mind. It is also at this time that the child is often comforted and pacified from the shock by very strong reinforcement that the religious systems, which the parents or guardians profess, are indeed factual. And an attempt is made to incorporate the respective religious traditions into the holiday as the real meaning for the celebration. Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny have both been uprooted from their original positions. They began as mythological mushroom heroes, understood in a spiritual context, both by children and adults. Now their literal meaning has been suppressed, and a fake image has been corporatized by Coke, Cadbury, and others. The effect this has had is to turn mythological heroes into fantasies and lies. It was not meant for children to discover as they are coming of age that parents, family, and friends have lied to them about Santa and the Easter Bunny. It was meant for them to discover deeper meanings behind the mythologies, such as the ancient astrotheological understanding of the heavens, the knowledge of the zodiacal procession, the seasonal cycles like solstices and equinoxes. The whole complexity of the modern Christmas mythos is an unexplainable mess without the magic mushroom. The story is completely unintelligible. Dana Larson wrote, some psychologists have discussed the cognitive dissonance which occurs when children are encouraged to believe in the literal existence of Santa Claus, only to have their parents lie revealed to them when they are older. By so deceiving our children, we rob them of a richer heritage. Many people in the modern world have rejected Christmas as being too commercial, claiming that this ritual of giving is actually a celebration of materialism and greed. Yet. The true spirit of this winter festival lies not in the exchange of plastic toys, but in celebrating a gift from the earth, the fruiting top of a magical mushroom, and the relevatory experiences it can provide. Instead of perpetuating outdated and confusing holiday myths, it might be more fulfilling to return to the original source of these seasonal celebrations. How about getting back to basics and enjoying some magical mushrooms with your loved ones this solstice? What better gift can a family share than a little piece of love and enlightenment? It's the most wonderful time of the year With the kids jingle belling and everyone telling you be of good cheer It's the most wonderful time it's the half happiest season of all With those holiday greetings and gay happy meetings When friends come to call It's the half happiest season of all There'll be parties for hosting marshmallows For toasting and caroling out in the snow There'll be scary ghost stories and tales of the glories of Christmases long, long ago. It's the most wonderful time of the year. There'll be much mistletoeing and hearts will be glowing when loved ones are near. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Scary 
ghost stories and tales of the glories of Christmas is all long ago. It's the most wonderful time of the year. There will be much mistletoeing and hearts will be glowing when loved ones are near. It's the most wonderful time. Yes, the most wonderful time. For the most wonderful time. so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this video presentation if you did please subscribe to my youtube channel like the video and share it on your favorite social media sites there's a lot more to come so stay tuned and we'll see you back next time